In this video, we are going to review how to add fractions. Let's start with a numeric example, 4 fifteenths plus 5 fifteenths. Don't reduce the 5 fifteenths because, as you remember, when you add fractions or subtract fractions, you need to have a common denominator. The denominators need to be exactly the same in order to add the two fractions. Your answer is going to have that same common denominator, in this case 15, and then you add the numerators. 4 plus 5 is 9. After you've added, now it's okay to reduce. Now we're going to look for common factors. 3 goes into 9 and 3 goes into 15. Just so that you make sure you know how that goes, 9 is 3 times 3, 15 is 3 times 5. There are those common 3's, and so the answer is 3 fifths. Now we move on to rational expressions. That's where we have polynomials in the numerator and or denominator. Again, we need a common denominator. And in the first example, I have the common denominator. So x squared plus 7x plus 12 in both, so that will be the denominator when I add them together. And it will stay the denominator until I see if I can reduce. I add the numerators. That means I have 2x plus 3 minus x. I can tidy that numerator. And do you know what? To save some space, I'm going to go ahead and factor that denominator as I come across, just setting myself up in case it will reduce. Factors of 12 that add to give 7, so plus 3 and plus 4, x plus 3 times x plus 4. In the numerator, combining like terms, 2x minus x is x plus 3. Okay. Now you see those common x plus 3's. So let's go ahead and cancel. Here's where that leaving behind the 1 is helpful to actually write the 1. Because your answer, the numerator is 1 and the x plus 4 is in the denominator. Note that that is an entirely different amount than x plus 4 itself. 1 over x plus 4 is our answer. The next example, again I'm adding two fractions, but this time the denominators are not the same. And it's not just x plus 8 or x plus 15. You actually need the two factors, x plus 5 times x plus 3. The numerators, I write mine a little bit differently than uh, the authors of our textbook do. The 6 over x plus 5, in order to make this fraction have that common denominator, I would have to multiply the top and the bottom by the factor that it's missing. It was missing the x plus 3. So now it has the same denominator. So what I'm going to write over here is 6 times x plus 3. And I'm going to look at the second fraction. It has the x plus 3. It's missing the x plus 5, so it would multiply, I would multiply, top and bottom by x plus 5. So the other part of my numerator is going to be plus 4 times x plus 5. Warning, do not cancel here. You see the x plus 3 and the x plus 3 and think, oh, I can cancel them. But you can't. This plus side has two terms in the top, right? This and this. In order to cancel x plus 3's, I need to have one in the bottom, over here with the 6, and then over here with the 4 and the x plus 5. I don't have one over here, so I can't cancel. Instead, we're going to tidy up that numerator by distributing and then combining like terms. So 6x plus 18 plus 4x plus 20. Again, that same denominator. 6x plus 4x is 10x. And 18 plus 20 is 38. So when I look at that numerator, I see a common factor of 2. But if I factor out the 2, I'm not going to get left behind either x plus 5 or x plus 3. That's telling me that this does not reduce, which also tells me that I'm done. All right, the last example, the most challenging. And the challenging part is just finding the lowest common denominator. I started by writing in factored form, so we don't have to do that much factoring to start with. The denominator of the first is x plus 2 times x minus 1. 
the denominator of the second is x plus 2 times x plus 7. My lowest common denominator, the LCD, has to take care of every single factor I see in either of these. So the way that I like to do it is I pick one of my fractions, usually the one on the left, and I write down all of its factors. x plus 2 times x minus 1. Then I look at the other fractions in my addition problem, and I see, does it have any factor in the denominator that's not accounted for here? So in this example, x plus 2, I have one of those, so I don't need another one for this one. But I also need an x plus 7, which I don't have. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply in an x plus 7. This is my lowest common denominator, so I'll go ahead and copy that in my answer spot. And then again, back over here in red, just so that you can see it, I'm going to multiply top and bottom of that first fraction by the factor of the LCD it's missing, which is the x plus 7. And the second fraction by the factor it's missing, which is the x minus 1, top and bottom by the same amount that has the effect of multiplying by 1, which doesn't change the fact fraction. So the new numerator is going to be x squared plus 7x, and then it's plus 3x minus 3. So I've gathered the numerators and I've distributed to get rid of the parentheses. If you want to pause, you can do that in two steps and catch up. Now let's tidy. Do not multiply out the bottom. The instructions are going to say leave in factored form. That means all the parentheses, and I will do the same on your midterm. And then let's tidy up the numerator. x squared plus 10x minus 3. Okay, now the numerator, it's a trinomial quadratic. Maybe it would factor and have one of these factors in the denominator. So you might give it a, a quick little try. Leading coefficients 1, factors of 3 that subtract to give 10. There isn't any, so the numerator doesn't factor, which means this doesn't reduce, which means you're done.